Hello everyone, Carrie Bradford here. In this video, I am going to show you how you can work with the shapes in the recipe cards kit using the standard studio edition with your DXF files. Um, this kit is totally customizable so you can choose your own colors, you can use the style of white space you want for your card or even the tab, the tab style that you want or in the placement of it. Um, before we get started though, I wanted to go over a few things about um, DXF files. The first one is DXF images come into studio as bits and pieces. When you bring in DXF files into studio, they come in as all the bits and pieces that make up that shape. Most of the time this doesn't really matter because you're often just cutting a shape. However, with this particular set of files, you're creating print and cuts or you know print, making some sort of a printable image. So there is a little bit of editing that we're going to have to do. On some parts of the image, we will be um, turning them into compound paths so that when you fill it with color, it will fill it up like it should. Um, and then also, um, you can change the way you import your DXF files. In preferences, you can change um, how a DXF file comes into Studio. So let's go take a look at that. On a Mac, you're going to go under Silhouette Studio. On a PC, you're going to go under Help. So I'm going to come over here to Silhouette Studio and Preferences. And then we want to go to Import Options. And as you can see here, it says when importing DXF, we have the choices to come in as is, as the image is, you know, within the confines of how it was created. We can have it centered on our screen or we can have it fit to page. So with the fit to page, that's the one I like to use because it comes in large every time. Many of the times when you do as is or centered, they come in really tiny. And I prefer just to go ahead and just see it big from the get go. If you're gonna have to resize it, you might as well just go ahead and, and you know start out large and then work your way down. So that's kind of my philosophy on that. You, you know, you're, you're welcome to do whatever it is that you would prefer, but that's what I like. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep it, mine's on set to fit to page, and then I'm just going to go ahead and say, okay. And one other thing I'd like to make sure that we're doing before we get started is I want to make sure that we all are using the same selection tool. So let's come up here to file, or excuse me, up into our preferences, and we want to go to selection. And here we want to make sure that we have selected when drag selecting. So that means when we click and drag our mouse, we want to select the shapes that are touching that drag box. So even if you get a little corner or something, if you're clicking and dragging just maybe the corner of a square, it's going to select that square. If we were to choose the other option, it would you would need to close your entire drag box around the entire square. So we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we just do a little bit of, you know, clicking and dragging to be able to select things. So go ahead and make sure that that's the option that's selected there. And let's say, okay. All right. So what we're going to do first is let's go ahead and bring up our list of files. And as you can see here, I've got, you know, I'm on a Mac and so I'm using Finder. If you're on a PC, there will be other file management programs that you'll be using um, to do this as well. Um, as you can see, the kit is divided up into three different sizes. We have a journal card, which is a three by four size, which is great for using with your project life or just, you know, an accent on your page or whatever. Then we have the recipe card size of four by six and five by seven. And then it, we have different patterns that we can choose from. We can choose from four different labels. We can choose from the two different inset styles. One's wide, meaning it goes edge to edge of the card, and the one that gives it a, that border all the way around. It's just kind of like a regular one. And then, of course, you know, we have the same options for the journal card. So what I like to do is I want to create a four by six um, recipe card. So I'm going to come and I like the wide format. It has some, you know, fun character to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that one. That's my inset. And I want to use the houndstooth pattern. And the reason for that is, is I want to show you how you can go about making it comp turning that into the compound path that we need. And then I also happen to know I like the label one. That that's a fun style. So I'm just going to select those three. And then I'm going to choose right click and open with. And again, on a on a PC, you'll have something very similar to this. And come down to other 
And then I, because silhouette was not listed in that previous list, so I'm coming here and finding my Silhouette Studio. And as you can see, it brings up the three patterns that I chose. So you, you can see I have my houndstooth, and I have my label, and I have my inset. Start off with this. Let's start with our pattern. So let's come over here and click on that one. And as you can see, we have our pattern. We also have a line that goes around it. And if you remember what I said before, the DXF file comes all in pieces. So if I were to click on some little random piece inside, you can see it just kind of leaves that hole there. I'm just going to go ahead and press undo and put that back. And then um, additionally, we have an outside line here. This part is, whoops, not that one. Let's see if we can get the line. This is a separate piece to it as well. And the reason for this is that number one, it can serve as a cut line if you're doing this as a print and cut. And number two, it can serve as a background color. You could fill it with color and have it complement your hound's tooth pattern. So I'm just going to go ahead and just move this over to the side for the moment while we work with our pattern here. Um, like I showed you before, they're, they're all tiny little pieces. And what we need to do is we need to tell Silhouette that whatever is on the inside of this shape, we have our outside line going around here, or, you know, whatever's on the outermost, we need to tell Silhouette that this is not a shape and this is not a shape. We want to tell Silhouette these are holes in this in, a, in the massive big picture of the whole shape itself. So if I were to, let's say if I selected all of this, and if I were to fill it with color, you can see it just every single piece fills with color. Let's just zoom in on a little bit here. So you can see all of it has filled with color. Now, if we were to make it a compound path, it will tell Silhouette that all these little inside pieces are to be a hole in the piece rather than having it be a shape on a shape, having it be this pattern on this pattern. It's going to tell Silhouette, let's make this a hole. So if I right click and choose Make Compound Path, you can see now it has made all of those holes so that now as you work with this, if we were to put that other rectangle behind this pattern, you could change it to aqua so that it would be pink and aqua. Um, so that's just kind of something that you have to do with DXF files, particularly if you're working with it in the color form. If you need to add color to it, that's what you'll have to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and zoom back out here. Oh, well, and additionally, just so that you notice here, you can see how it has all the lines run up around them. We want to get rid of those, so I'm going to choose my shape and come to the line color, and we want to choose no color. And let's come to our cut style, and you can see currently it does have a cut style. We want to change that to say no cut. And then let's go back to our page window. Okay, so there we have our hound's tooth. And now let's maybe, let's maybe for just the sake of being able to see it, let's fill that with color. Let's fill that outer shape with color. Let's maybe try the aqua, just for something fun. And then we want to select both of those items. We are going to come to our align window, and then we're going to choose center. And that will just put them all together. And you can see now, that that um, back color is that aqua color. If we want to just put it at white, we can put it at white, pink and white. If we want to change the, the um, pink to maybe a brown, we could do that. And if you want to make your own custom colors, of course, you can always come down here to the advanced options, and then you can play around with whatever you want to in here. You can put in an RGB value, the red, green, blue value. Um, you can also use a color picker, so that you can pick out colors of, of other things that you're using in order to you know get a particular color that you want. Um, but for now I'm just going to go ahead and stick with maybe that light tan. And then I'm going to zoom back out. Now this is a 4x6 card and currently it's telling us our size is 10.36 and I don't want it that big. So we need to size it and to size everything that we have we have to group it together first. So I'm going to press Control or Command G to group it. Um, we could also go right click and choose group or ungroup right there too. So let's make sure I have both items selected. And then we can choose group. 
And then we're gonna come to our sizing scale window and we're gonna put in a width of six inches, click on lock aspect ratio and say apply. So now we have this pattern at the exact size that it was intended and we can now go ahead and save this out as a studio file. So I usually just press Control or Command Shift S for Save As. You could also go up under File and you could choose Save As that way as well. And then I'm just going to click on OK. And then now I have this saved as a studio pattern. It's no, I, I still have my DXF file, but I also have it as a studio file. So that makes that much easier to add to the library. You see it in color. Um, again, where we're working with these as a printable type of an item, you know, having it in color and saving it that way for future use is the easiest thing for you to do. All right, let's go ahead and do the same thing to our label. And I am just going to kind of grab them and scale it down a little bit just so that we're not working with something quite so large. So now what we need to do is we need to tell, again, tell Silhouette that this line and this line are actually, they actually work together. It is a compound path so that when we fill them, when we fill it with a color, it won't fill up that shape and then that shape. So if you watch, if I get that one and that one and come to fill it with black, it fill, fills everything with black. So we don't want that. What we want is for Silhouette to see that inner shape as a whole. So if I right click and choose Make Compound Path, it will now, if I fill it up with color, you can see it's a different color. Again, we've got the outside line, so let's come up here, turn off our line, turn off the line color. We also want to turn off the cut style. So let's come to our cut style window and say no cut. Okay, so now let's come back and let's go to our fill. We want to fill the back shape with black, or you could choose whatever color you want. And I want my inner shape to be white. So that kind of makes it kind of a standard black and white. Again, you can change it to be whatever color you want, whatever size you want. That's what's so fun about this is that you don't have to have Photoshop elements or you know Photoshop in order to do designing. You can do it all in studio. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna zoom back out. And I might size it down just a little bit more, maybe around you know an inch and a half, because that's about right. That's about the size. I think I had them between 1.3 and 1.5 inches. So I'm just going to go ahead and have my little label like that and press Control or Command Shift S and save that label as a studio file.